hate to see it. You hate to see it. it. You hate to see it, but you know, <laughs> it's like a train wreck. You can't look away. What up and welcome to the Rival Fantasy Sports Fantasy Baseball Show. I am Neil. He is Brian. What's up, Brian? What's up, Neil? How you doing, man? Hey, man, I'm doing good. Doing good. You know, for those who celebrate Easter, that just came and gone. Yes, I'm happy, on to lead to a fantasy belated. baseball, man. Damn, what a what a nice opening weekend. There was uh, already a lot of good storylines, a lot of interesting takeaways, um, plenty to talk about this week, and I'm sure that will be that way uh, every week moving forward. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, a lot of exciting stuff. I mean, this, like you said, it was as you know, I mean, as I guess as good as we could ask for, right? I mean, yeah. some players are going to start off slow, as expected, but yeah. for the most part, there was you know enough entertainment yeah. to go around for the the whole week. Yeah, some slow starting players, but some really hot teams, some some hot some hot players and slow starting teams you know you're exactly. getting a nice little mix of everything and what we'll do is we'll start with uh the rivals of the week you know, the standout players that we feel like we're exciting you know throughout the week some guys just have really good games some guys have good games all week it is what it is we'll talk about some hitters that we feel like had you know really good weeks and then we'll also have some pitchers uh that we feel like good weeks i think the best guy to start with is mookie betts man i just the the man is amazing. He, I think there's an argument to be made. He's the best active player in baseball. A lot of people will mm. come for me with pitchforks, but I don't know many guys who can switch from right field to second base to shortstop all in the course of like two seasons and be elite level, uh, you know, both as a fielder and as a, as a hitter. So yeah, he had 11 hits, four home runs. I think that's including the solo series, you know, but I mean, just, just an unbelievable start to the season and yeah. Mookie, you know, barring injury, I don't really foresee him not continuing to do that, especially at the top of that lineup. No, it's a heck yeah, of a lineup they have. Yeah, eleven hits, four home runs, ten RBIs. He got walked seven times. I mean, I mean just you got, impressive. You get double digit RBIs out of the leadoff spot. That's, <laughs> That's crazy. crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. I mean, we talked about it last week. The Dodgers are gonna be good, man. Like, regardless, yeah. at least as you say in the regular season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, postseason <laughs> completely different story. Um, the last few years, and I mean, that's that's you can say that about the Dodgers. You can say that about the Braves, the Astros. I mean, it's yeah, that's just it's narrative y and you never know what's going to happen. But yeah, the as long as the Dodgers can re- maintain some modicum of health, um, this lineup is on paper the best in the MLB, like by a wide margin. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Uh, Michael's B, Michael B's cousin said, "Go Yankees." Soto for MVP. <laughs> Since we're speaking about, you know, yeah. players of the week, I mean, Soto did pretty damn good as well. <laughs> yeah, wow. He um, – talk about kryptonite for, for Houston. My goodness. Like, anytime Juan Soto walks into the juice box, the dude just completely ends the Astros. Um, yeah. he's, he's kind of owning them lately. But, yeah, Juan Soto looks great. Uh, the defense has taken a, a complete 180. His, his arm looks great. He – you know, he looks like he – I hate saying it, but he just looks like a Yankee. Like it just makes sense seeing him in that uniform. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, this is the one time where I'm like, okay, I hope the Yankees actually do sign him to an extension because <laughs> it does fit. Like it, it, yeah. it makes so much sense. Um, so yeah, good, good on the Yankees and good on soda. Great. Yeah. That's one of those players that I always see Mets next year. Michael after him. I don't know. I, we'll see look, I think, you know, there's <laughs> going to be a bidding war. He's going to be, yeah. you know, he won't. I don't think he'll make as much money as Otani, but I think he'll get dangerously close to yeah. that mark. So. Yeah. And, and speaking of your Astros, I just realized they played as bad as the Mets. Basically, I mean, yeah, man, the Astros can't win at home. <laughs> they haven't won at home since the ALDS of last season. Um, yep. So that's my, my uh, Mets sucked. My Mets sucked, man. So yeah, it's, it it's it hey, look. This is the time where people are going to overreact because opening weekend, it's everything's under a microscope. Yeah. We are we are a sliver of a fraction through the season so far. So no time to panic. Don't hit the panic no. button on anything yet, folks. No, not yet. All right. Another rivals of the week. I guess this guy, nobody probably would have put on the list, but Lord is Gurriel Jr. Eight hits, Man. three home runs, 10 RBIs, another 10 RBI guy in one week. He he's always that forgotten guy in the lineup. He's like the unsexy fantasy pick. But every time yeah. that he gets the opportunity, he tends to produce. He did it with the Blue Jays. He did it last year with the the Diamondbacks. He's doing it again. When you have a really good lineup top down and you're protected on every side, you 
you you can kind of wait for your pitches. And yeah. Gurriel Jr. doesn't have to be the dude in that lineup, which helps him. I think he's he's much better as a role player, clutch hit kind of guy. Um, you kind of just plug and play him, and he's showing it. He's showing why the why the Diamondbacks resigned him. This off yeah, absolutely. Let me ask you this: I, when we were doing best ball drafts all all off season and you know challenges and all these kind of things, I don't remember seeing him getting drafted a lot. So no. do you think now this week we're going to see a lot of him being drafted in best ball drafts? Or, I, I think know. so. I think you're going to see him a lot in weekly drafts. Um, I think he's a great daily play, especially when they're playing at home. You know, the yeah the Diamondbacks, he does great in Arizona. So, yeah, yeah. I would uh, – and I, I'm going to throw him into as many bingo lineups as I can because he's got that – he's got enough volatility where he may get you like three strikeouts, but he could also get you a home run, right? So, right. Um, he's a really great bingo option, I think, for for many weeks of this season. Yeah, it's exciting when you see guys like that. Like I said, I, we did so many best ball drafts, and I don't yeah. remember his name popping up many at all. So it's like exciting to already have a fresh name. Like I mean, I know he's thirty, but like it's good to see like a new name already appearing. That like, oh, this guy could be used. I didn't think about that. Like yeah. you know, so it's gonna be fun to see. And then um, the last guy I want to mention as you know, as far as a hitter and everything is Ozzy. Man, Ozzy Albie's. <laughs> Five hits. I mean, and they played not as many games as everybody else, I don't think, right? Because they had. Yeah, they only played three games this weekend. Um, You know, they didn't miss one, but they were rained out Thursday. So opening day got moved to Friday for the Braves and the the Phils. But yeah, man, you know, Ozzy is the he's the epitome of like if he could just play all 162 perennial MVP candidate, in my opinion. (laughs) Yeah. Like he, he, he always ends up getting banged up or hurt, which, you know, that sucks. Ozzy's just he's been doing this forever and he's only like he's like 27 years old he's still so young in the grand scheme of things yeah. and the Braves have you know they signed him to like the most team friendly deal it was like five years or ten years for like five million like something just absurd that That's he should decide yeah. um, but yeah no Ozzy Albies you know obviously he's not on waivers he was like a second round pick in most places yeah. but yeah. Um, you know he could return that value and then some uh, pretty quickly if he keeps this up yeah, absolutely. All right, so those are our three rivals of the week, a hitter. Now, if we move down to pitchers, these guys, I mean, I guess you could have predicted some of these, but not necessarily the uh, the production that they did, but you could predict that they were going to come out yeah. wins potentially. Uh, the first one, Shane Bieber, he got a win this week, uh, gave up no runs, had 11 strikeouts. Now, yeah. I know I've seen you draft him in some best ball drafts. I think I, I drafted him like once or twice, but I didn't get crazy with him or nothing, but um, big big week for him, man. Yeah, big bounce back for Bieber. He's, you know, in years past, Cy Young candidate, been kind of one of those guys. He was in a bunch of trade rumors last year at the the deadline, um, which I think we'll probably see again this year, depending on how the Guardians are are set up, you know, come, come the yeah. summer. Uh, but yeah, no, this was great for Bieber. It's good to see him healthy. Baseball is better when guys like this are are able to pitch at, at a high level and, and perform and Seeing him get double digit strikeouts is is always nice. Um, yeah. So it's yeah, he's going to be a big injury guy, right? Like as long as he stays healthy, things should be pretty you know yeah. positive. But it's always in the back of your mind, kind of. Yeah, and, and you know, keep in mind too. I forget who they were playing this week. Um, they played Oakland last week, right? Yeah. So also keep in mind, it, like yes, good. We're not going to discount the performance, but right. top down, Oakland is a bottom third team in the MLB. So this this is also a testament to if you're streaming pitchers or you're you know playing in daily leagues, Oakland is not a bad team to target as far as the starting pitcher against them. Yeah. So that's gonna be something you do all season long. It's like they're playing the athletics. Let's get yeah, the pitcher. The going. athletics, the Nats, <laughs> I think those two are very easy targets right now as far as your your streaming pitchers. Yeah, I think I did that last year too with the athletics. Anytime I seen a player playing them, I'm like, yeah, yeah. let's get him in the lineup. <laughs> and sh- you know, on paper, the A's shouldn't be producing like this bad of a product, but they're just they're not. They just can't get it done for whatever reason. No, not at all. No. All right, and then the next guy we have on here is Bobby Miller with the Dodgers. I feel like we're gonna say the Dodgers a lot here, but yeah, Bobby Miller also got the win. Also gave up no runs, eleven strikeouts as well. So just a really high end performance from him. Probably less of a surprise in terms of you know he's a Dodger, he's going to get a lot of run support, he's going to get wins because of that. But um, yeah. still an impressive outing for sure. I mean, yeah, good to see. And I think Bobby Miller was kind of like 
one of those off season darlings, like very like hyped up as a like an SP three for people. Um, and like you said, Neil, with that lineup, hard to hard to turn your nose up at any pitchers that are associated with the Dodgers. So, uh, yeah, Bobby Miller, I think we're going to say his name a lot. The Dodgers have a pen shot for just they build magnificent pitchers from their farm system, and this guy is no exception. So, yeah, if Bobby Miller is ever pitching, I, I like him as a as a daily and weekly pick. Yeah, I found myself in best ball drafts drafting him a lot. Him, yeah. I was, I, I was, I was uh, getting the Millers a lot. Brace Miller, Bobby Miller, <laughs> like yeah. I waited on pitcher. Like of, I was getting yeah. that range. That's so, what you gotta do. Uh, yeah. So shout out to Bobby Miller, and then the last one, Brady Singer for the Royals. Another you know guy you talked about got yeah. the win, gave up no runs, ten strikeouts. So shout out to all three of these guys. I mean, they killed it with the strikeouts. Yeah. The double digit strikeouts is just. It's a it's a beautiful thing to see, especially in fantasy. And if anyone watched the live stream last week on opening day, I said that the Royals had done Brady Singer very dirty. Um, <laughs> he took it on himself to add, I think, two new pitches this offseason, and obviously it's paying off. So I hope for Brady Singer's sake, if no one else, that this continues just purely so I can take a victory lap at the end of the season and say I was right, yeah. um, that he is a good enough pitcher to, to be that guy. But, yeah, the Royals – there's something happening there. I don't really know if it's going to translate to wins, but you know, it's nice to see these teams that, you know, weren't supposed to come out of the gate really great doing well. So good for the Royals. Yeah. yeah. So shout out to all of our rivals of the week. Give them some air horn action. They deserve it. Shout out to those guys. All right, let's move on to, you know, kind of one of the more important things when it comes to fantasy. And that's the news, the injuries, because these are situations that we want to monitor in terms of, what you know, it's a good thing in a positive way or a negative thing in terms of players being injured and stuff. Then you're also going to get into like, you know, do I pick the guy's replacement? You know, do I not worry about him? Is he not really as good as a starter? So it's not even worth, you know, dealing with type of situation. So let's get into these news and injuries right now. Um, the first one, Bo Bichette, late scratch with neck spasms. I just think it's something to monitor, you know what I mean, from a day to day. Obviously, he's a, one of those guys that people pay a lot of attention to in fantasy. And so another, you know, young guy that people have a lot of, you know, love for. So. Uh, I thought that was interesting, especially with neck spasms. Are you really concerned or you're kind of not concerned? I wouldn't be. Yeah, when it's a spasm, that's I assume it's probably just like a nerve thing. Maybe swung the bat too hard, kind of pinched. Yeah. Keep an eye on it. Probably avoid him like Monday, Tuesday in your daily drafts. Uh, but I think if you're going for a weekly, you can wait on shortstop or wait on, if he's like a late infield pick for you. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, worst case in best ball, you avoid him this week and then see how he does. If he's back Wednesday, then great. You know, no big deal. And then he's a, he's a week three target in all of your drafts. Yeah. All right. Next one, uh, Chaz Chisholm. I, I just want to bring this up because I think it's interesting that, you know, he was complaining about the open roof for the Marlins and yeah. that, you know, he's blaming it for their struggles a little bit here early on, saying that, you know, they didn't play like that all year. All of a sudden they got it open. He can't see the pitches, this and that. I'm, I, I kind of bring it up because one, because of that, one – and also because like the second or third comment he's made like recently last time he criticized like the players from last year that were on the team, some of the players. And so like, I'm kind of curious your take is like, is Chaz a little bit of a headache? Is he, does he, is he not happy in Miami? Like, what do you think he's, what, what, what do you think so with Chaz? Like, what do you think was Jazz with all this stuff like that he's doing? Yeah, it, it does have the, the odor of please trade me. I'm sick of yeah. being here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, on the flip side, if Jazz Chisholm can play a full season, then we'll talk. Um, but I don't, you know, he hasn't done that for a while. He's had, he's been banged up. The MLB, yeah. the show curse caught up to him. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think this is just another, I think he's looking for a little bit of media attention. He seems to like stirring the pot a little bit. You know, Jazz is still a great player, but obviously the, uh, the open roof didn't bother the Pirates. And that's why the Pirates are undefeated right now. So um, maybe it's more of a jazz problem than it is a a uh, field problem. Yeah. I'll just I just thought it was that. interesting. I'm like, how many times are we going to see him in the in the media? You know, yeah. For the wrong reasons, and, too. Like, don't yeah. you, like just go out there, start stealing some bags, hit some doubles. Like, that's what jazz is really good at. Yeah. Like, back it up with the play first. And then and then like, let's. Then we can have these conversations, but not game game three, game four. I, we don't need to talk about this yet. Yeah, I mean, he just hit a grand slam the other day, so that was good. Do yeah. more of that. 
<laughs> yeah, just just and, and adjust, right? Like it's you know, don't yeah. make excuses this early on. Like, yeah, you guys lost. It's okay, move on. Like just yeah. don't let the media I think he lets the media kind of dig at him because he thinks yeah. they're stupid questions because frankly asking somebody to the effect hey what was the reason for your struggles because three games in like <laughs> exactly it's yeah. it's fine they will figure yeah. it out yeah what do you want him to say right so he's just starts yeah. throwing stuff out there we see this happen in all sports so players get tired yeah. of the media and start answering things in weird ways um, all right. So, all right. Enough with jazz. Let's move on to Eloy Jimenez. Uh, could be heading to the IO. Yeah. He, uh, he has an adductor strain and it sounds like it got pretty, it's more severe than they originally thought. So keep an eye on it. Could be an IL stint for him starting this week. Um, not that you're really relying on the white Sox hitters outside of like Luis Robert jr. Yeah. Um, but you know, just something to, to monitor. Um, if Eloy Jimenez, it, it makes, the White Sox, an even juicier target for your daily and weekly pitching. Yep. Yes, they are another target of ours. All right, a guy that we mentioned, this one's a bummer. This one's the biggest injury bummer on the list today, and it's because we even spoke him up last week. We talked yep. about how I, I felt he was underrated. He felt like he had he was in a good position this year. And Justin Steele pulls his hamstring open at night, likely to miss at least a month, you think? Yeah, it sounds – originally they said two weeks. Now it looks more like a month. Um he he strained it trying to flip a ball to first on a infield single. Great play. He made the play, I believe, but you know, kind of just crumbled uh, to the ground. And originally, I thought it was his knee. When you were you know when you're watching it live and a guy like grabs at it, the front of his leg, you yeah. think ACL. But yeah, so this is just a real bummer. Um, you know, like like we said last week, the Cubs I thought were kind of a dark horse team in the NL Central. I thought Justin Steele could be a Cy Young candidate pretty pretty easily. So this this hurts his candidacy and it, it hurts the Cubs in general. I yeah. Mean, Is there anyone we care about in terms of replacing him in the rotation? I mean So he's not necessarily a replacement, but I think Javier Assad is somebody you can watch based on this. He was kind of slotted in as the Cubs fifth starter. Um he might, you know, I think he'll stick in the rotation now as long as Steele right. is out. So you don't have to worry about him. Um, you know, getting demoted to the bullpen or getting called down. So someone to monitor, especially in those two star weeks or when you need a streamer uh, for your daily drafts, I think Javier Assad is a, is someone to keep an eye on. Gotcha. Um, let me see here. We also got Royce Lewis, 10 day IL. Quad. Injury. Yeah. And this quad strain apparently is much, much worse than they thought. So he left opening day. They thought it would be a minimum stint. It's only progressed worse. Now it's sounding like a month, maybe two months. Man, um, and this is just, you know, you bring this up because Royce Lewis has been a, we're all waiting for it. You know, he, he had mm -hmm. like consecutive home runs in the playoffs last year. The dude, when he's healthy, when he's on the field, he's unbelievable. But, you know, he's had the same problem that Alex Kirilov has happened. A lot of these twins players, they just, they cannot stay healthy once they come up to the big leagues. You know, Byron Buxton, right? Like right. the twins just do not have a good track record of keeping these studs <laughs> healthy. And so I don't know if it's something in the water in Minnesota or what's going on, but you know, if you if you took Royce Lewis to be your starting third baseman, you're probably gonna need to make a backup plan uh at this stage of the game because it's uh it's not looking good for him. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, they have they always have injury issues, man, with their big players. It sucks. Yeah. Um, and then also one more injury um, for the Braves. We don't even have him on our list today. Murphy, the catcher. Yo, yes, yeah. Sean Murphy strained his oblique, um, so that means Travis Darno is now the official. He's the guy behind the dish. I imagine Do you trust Sean Murphy him a lot in fantasy, or you don't really care. I think I think Travis Darno, if you. If you punted catcher, if you didn't get like Will Smith or William Contreras or like one of the top guys or right. Real Muto and your streaming catcher, I think he's a good option uh, as a stopgap because when Darno does have the at bats, he does perform. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I think Darno is a fine play, but I also think that Sean Murphy will probably do a minimum stint on the IL and be back. Got it. All right, and then the only other news I'll make sure we'll make sure we mention is that the Twins and the Brewers only have five games each this yes. week. Yes, yeah. And so as you're doing your daily drafts or weekly drafts, just know that you'll probably get a little less bang for your buck with those players on those teams. Um, 
So just know that going in. If you're drafting Christian Yelich, if you're drafting um, Carlos Correa, you know you're going to get one less game out of them on your on yeah. weekly slates. Yeah, and it's important to also mention that you also wrote an article this week about I player did. pitchers who will get two starts this week. Yes, two star so, pitchers a big deal if you are, especially in daily and weekly. Um, you know these guys. You're kind of sacrificing the the sexy ace, you know, your your Spencer Striders, your Zach Wheelers to try to maximize the value uh, of these guys. So like Shona Imanga is a really good one for the Cubs this week. Um, Tanner Houck pitches today and then likely on Sunday, same with Reese Olsen. Um, so I think, yeah, you guys got a lot of good options for your two start players here. Christopher Sanchez for the Phillies. Um, Michael Waka is that that really kind of gross deep, like if you're really going for it um, since they, he opens the week at Baltimore, which is not great, but then you get the white Sox, <laughs> So you, you take the good with the bad, right? Same with Imanga, um, you know, gets the Rockies at the front of the week, which is always yeah. nice, but then he, they got to play LA. So um, you take the good with the bad with the two star pitchers and try to maximize the, the point totals as best you can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I want to make sure we mention that because we're going to talk about the teams that aren't going to play a lot. There are pitchers who are going to play a lot, and it's important, yes. right? So, all right, cool. So that's the big news and injuries. I don't have anything else that I missed. Do you have anything that you missed that we missed? No, I mean, there's always going to be more news, more notes. Um, yeah. So we're trying to hit on some of the big, impactful fantasy ones. So don't yeah. come for us if we miss like the oh, – yes, I know Joey <laughs> Bart got DFA'd. I get it. Yeah, Nobody was rostering Joey Bart in their fantasy leagues. I was drafting him in dailies. <laughs> So don't come at me for not talking yeah. about Joey Bart. Yeah, it's important to mention. Like, we're talking about, you know, the stuff that we feel like are going to impact people the most in fantasy. And, you know, when you're playing the rival games where there's challenges, best ball, whatever it is, like, Joey Bart, yeah, it's a, it's a story. But, like, at the end of the day, like, is it going to affect your fantasy team? We don't want to no. drag the episode out forever. Obviously, we could and talk about every single little detail. But for that, I mean, if there is anything, you know, significant that happens after this, we may put up a video later in the week or you may have to just monitor the socials and see what we post then. But... Yeah, we're going to just cover as many of the main bigger stories that you know are impactful right now that we can. So, Absolutely. Um, all right, cool. So let's get out of news and injuries and move over to waiver wire. Waiver uh, with the waiver wire, we're going to start with the hitters. We'll do pitchers and hitters, but we'll start yeah. with the hitters. Uh, I think the biggest name, I think I don't I, I would consider it a surprise, I guess, because, I mean, if they're on the waiver wire, obviously a lot of people weren't drafting them necessarily. I also think that with the waiver wire, you could also look at it as sneaky plays for challenges on rival. I mean, guys that yep. aren't necessarily the biggest of names, but are hitting like it or, or pitching like it. Um, it can catch people off guard. Or again, if you're doing the weekly best ball or the daily best ball, these guys, you know, you should be considering for sure. Yeah. Um, so let's start with Michael Conforto. I mean, six hits, two home runs, six runs, five RBIs, former Met. So I'm mad. Uh, how do you feel, man? I have loved Conforto is another one when he's healthy, mm -hmm. the dude absolutely rakes. Um, yeah. And so it's good to see him healthy. I think again, Another one of those guys when he doesn't have the weight of the world on his shoulders, having to be the dude in the lineup. Yep. He he and performs when he's healthy. Better. When he, and, and when he's healthy, healthy. so yeah. yeah, ride the hot hand. And look, the Giants ballpark is not the most hitter friendly ballpark. You know, it's right. kind of like Camden Yard now. The way they changed the dimensions. However, if you hit that alley in right center field, <laughs> you can leg out a double and a triple very easily. So. Yep. I think Conforto is set up to, to have a really good year if he can keep up, you know, stay on the field. Um, so, yeah, I love this pick. And I think, um, you know, it's good to see him back in the conversation. Yeah. Another one, J.D. Davis. Another former Met. Kinda, yeah, another former Met. Former Astro <laughs> so as well. He was an yeah. Astro, then he was a Met, and now he's, you know, been bopping around a lot. But It's one of those things when you're like, oh, my team hasn't won a game this year. Oh, this guy used to play for our team. And he's doing amazing. It's awesome. Uh, but J.D. Davis, man, five hits, two home runs, three runs, two RBIs. I think he was a late signer for them, too, wasn't he? He just he recently was. signed right before, right before yeah. the season started. So, And, you know, I, I'm not shocked to see him kind of have this power streak. He's he's notorious for that. He'll, yeah. he'll have a lot of strikeouts, but he's also going to provide a lot of power in an A's lineup that needs power, uh, yeah. that needs someone to catalyze a little bit of you know RBI movement. Jay Davis, I think he could stick. Now – you have to go in knowing that like this week could be really good for JD Davis and next week they may move on from him to let younger guys get reps. Right. right. So 
when you have these teams that are in very volatile states, something to keep in mind. But J.D. Davis has always been a guy that when he's hot, you you, pl- you can plug and play him, no problem. So good good alternative if you're out Royce Lewis right now and your waiver wire is very thin in like traditional season long leagues, you could do worse than J.D. Davis. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, next on the list, Matt Chapman, another San Francisco player. Five hits, two home runs, four runs, six RBIs, just out here slugging. I mean, you'll love to see it because (laughs) Matt Chapman has always, I mean, I remember, I'm old enough to remember when it was always the question of is Matt Chapman or Nolan Arenado the best third baseman in the MLB? Right. There was that we had that conversation for years. And (laughs) Matt Chapman could just never get over that like consistent hump of, of providing power on the regular basis. If he does this in his new mm-hmm. home, again, San Fran, same situation as Conforto, right? Like that lineup is sneaky stacked. Like, yeah, well, you got Solaire in there. You got, um, I forgot the name of the, the guy they signed out of Japan, the outfielder. Um, but, you know, that it's a very, and Tyro Estrada, when Tyro Estrada is batting sixth in your lineup, like you have a very strong lineup. Uh, yeah, that nobody's going to talk about. So, yeah, Matt Chapman, another great, if, if somehow he did not get drafted in your traditional leagues, grab him, plug and play. Um, also, just love him for weekly and for bingo. I think he's like a stalwart bingo lineup guy for the entire season. Yeah, you can yeah, kind of just these guys are sneaky good for bingo, man. Yeah, because again, right, you're you're looking for dudes who may get you home runs, but then will also strike out or like ground into double plays. Matt Chapman's really good at all of the above, so like yes. he's he's a really solid bingo play. Yep, absolutely. All right, cool. And then the last guy on our list, Oswaldo Cabrera for the Yankees. 7-17 seven to start the year, six RBIs, two two home runs. The Yankees are hot, man. There's going to be names like this that are going to pop up that you might not have been considering before but are worthy now. Yeah, and Cabrera, um, he's got – not on rival, but if you're playing anywhere else for traditional season long, he has like six position eligibility. I think he's – Second base, shortstop, third base, and outfield eligible in most places. That's so that's beautiful. The utility alone um, is huge. So go run, grab him. Um, but yeah, Yankees are hot. Career, and I don't see a world. I wrote this in the waiver wire article, but I don't see a world where if he keeps this up even remotely close to what he's been doing, the Yankees can't bench him once LeMahieu comes back. I just I don't see a world where that happens. If anything, bench Giancarlo Stanton, put LeMahieu in at DH, and they just kind of you know, switch off there. Um, yeah. But yeah, th- yeah, I think he's going to stick in that lineup for the most of the season. So, yeah. All right. That's it. For you hate to see it, man. You hate seeing the Yankees <laughs> be back to the evil empire, but here we are. You hate to see it. You hate to see you, it. You hate to see it, but yeah, it's like a train wreck. You can't look away. So. <laughs> All right. That is it for the hitters. Let's move over to some waiver wire pitchers who, you know, probably didn't, maybe, maybe didn't get drafted or got drafted later. Again, I'm always thinking best ball. So, these yeah. are definitely guys that I'm targeting in best ball yeah. that, you know, definitely didn't go in a lot of the drafts that I was in already. Yeah. So and just to caveat benefiting. that too, Neil, we also, we played 10 and 12 team best ball. So like it is more yes. shallow than some of you hardcores are going to come in and be like, this guy was taken in my 16 team. Like, I know we get it, yeah. but yeah, just like we're, we're playing, a, we're not getting into the BABIP and Woba leagues. So just exactly don't come for us when we exactly. mention guys that may have already been taken in your 16 team leagues. Exactly. Keep your hate to the side. By the way, if you're watching, like hit the subscribe button, man. If you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Give us some likes. We need to, you know, we're fighting the out, you know, the algorithm out here for YouTube, man. We got to do our best. And the only way to do that is you guys hit and subscribe. So please make sure you do that. Hit the subscribe button. All right. Um, for the pitchers. Uh, let's start with Jerry Jones, Pittsburgh. Got Man. the win, five and a little, little over five innings. You know, five point two innings of work. Yeah. Ten strikeouts, another big strikeout guy this last week. Wasn't perfect, but I think it's like kind of hard to ignore, right? I mean, it is. It's very hard to ignore, and I mean, the the Pirates are now in this position where they're going to have these young guys coming up. Like we were talking about Paul Skeens a little bit last week, and mm-hmm. like in the off season of. He's the guy that you think is kind of their ace moving forward, you know, of the future. Pirates are very good at developing pitching. You know, we saw yeah. with Mitch, we've seen it with Mitch Keller, um, Jamison Talion before he got traded, right? Like, so this is this is par for the course for the Pirates. And um, 
you know, they're undefeated right now. So Jerry Jones is a part of that. And I think, you know, you, you temper your expectations. You have to know that there's going to be some bumps and bruises for the young kid. He's 22. I think I was just going to say he's only 22 years old. So, so he's, you know, temper your expectations, but I think if it's a plus matchup or if the pirates are playing at home and Jones is on the bump, love him as a daily pick, love Mm -hmm. him as a daily pick. All right, next guy on the list, uh, Jake Flaherty, Detroit. Seven strikeouts on six innings pitch. Looks Dude. solid. Uh, good upcoming matchup. Again, we, we love the matchup. We love seeing Jack Flaherty turn back the clock. And yeah. then this is just a little <laughs> bit of that. I'm going to say it's a little bit of that A.J. Hinch magic in Detroit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. When you have a manager who's done this before, right, of taking a team, very young, not supposed to compete, Helping them turn a corner, helping some of these pitchers who need some some changes. You know, AJ Hinch was a was a catcher, so like he knows how to do this stuff. Yeah. So it's good to see Jack Flaherty bounce back. Um, I I think you have to roster him. I think if he's if he's on your waiver wire somehow, grab him immediately um, and and stash him. You don't have to start him every week or every every outing, but I think I'd so much rather have him on my bench than somebody else start him against me. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think that Detroit team, they're going to surprise people. I think they yeah. could sneak sneak away with that division. Um, so this will be a big part of it if Flaherty yeah. can stay healthy. I mean, the first three pitchers did good, man. Scooball, Kenta, and Jack. So, so and then see if it... you get Reese Olsen and Casey Mize. Like, it's a it, top down. It is a sneaky good rotation. Yeah. it's. I think it's going to surprise some people. All right, another guy that we spoke about last week. I felt like he was worthy of putting on the list. We're going to give him some air horns. Yeah. And that is another Yankee, Marcus Stroman. Stro show. I, I, I put Lewis Gill on the list as well just because he is going to pitch this week, right? And I think, like, you know, he may fall into some good value just because of the fact that he's on a good team. They're starting yeah. hot. I know he's young. I know he hasn't really proved himself. But Marcus Stroman, let's just start with that. Yankees are hot. Like I said, Stroman played pretty decent. I mean, he got the win. He had some strikeouts. It wasn't one of the 10 or 11 strikeouts like some of the guys we talked about earlier. But yeah. Um, you know, got some walks, but not too bad. Um, but so what do you think? Marcus Stroman, man, good waiver pickup. Yeah, I think Stroman, if the Yankees are able to keep this up, he's he's good to have as your like SP four or five. Uh, I don't really think you can go wrong. And he's never been a big like strikeout guy. He does have a penchant for walking some people, but again, right? Yeah, the Astros didn't look great, but they're still a good team. Right. And so he, yeah. he put on a pretty good show against a tough Astros lineup. So I think, yeah, I think Stroman, I think you keep an eye on Gil because I believe he pitches tonight uh, for the Yankees. Yeah. So keep an eye on what his performance is. But yeah. The look, Aaron Boone may, ha, may have already bought himself another season just because the Yankees weren't even <laughs> supposed to start this well. So, you know, I think, um, yeah, keep an eye on it. And I think it, it pains me to say it, but the Yankees have, have, seems like they figured something out this offseason so far. Yeah. But not to overreact. <laughs> right, right. We can't overreact too early. Yeah. We don't want to react. We always say that, but like we also don't want to like underreact. Like, exactly. You have to you have to, to note it, it and you have to talk yeah. about it, but yeah. you also don't you know, don't drop Talk somebody who had, you know, your eighth round pick because they had a bad first outing that yeah. you're trying to replace them. Like you don't win your fantasy baseball season in week two. It's like you don't win it at the draft. So, right. <laughs> we had a long season ahead oh, of yeah. us, folks. Oh, yeah. I, and I say that during football season is 17 weeks. Yeah. For baseball, it's for real. We're, <laughs> we're 20 plus season. weeks. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's all good. It's all yeah. good. Let it ride. Absolutely. And the last pitcher on the list that we want to mention for the waiver wire, Abner Uribe, uh, Milwaukee. Had two saves over the weekend. Yep. Looking good. I mean, has, has control issues, but could be the closer of the future, you think? I think so. I think, um, you know, he, he will give up some long balls and he does. Yeah. I mean, he's an absolute flamethrower, um, which, you know, that just tends to be that lends itself to having control issues, but Devin Williams is out. He's out for the foreseeable future. Saves are probably going to come from Uribe. And I know on, on rival specifically, we don't necessarily have points for saves, but right. in your weekly games, if you're trying to maximize some, some pitching and you want to get guys who are in high leverage situations that can get you strikeouts, you know, looking at guys like your rebay are good. And then if you're in a traditional season long league and he's somehow on the waiver wire to me, 
I'm going to take the lotto ticket. You have three guys right now in Milwaukee that could be the close. Piampus and McGill and your rebate. I'm going to take your rebate because he's homegrown. He's a guy they've had in their system for a while. They brought him up last year to kind of be the, the setup. And so now it's, now it's his time to shine and it's showing. Right. So, so I'll take your rebate over most waiver wire closers or most waiver wire uh, relievers this week. Makes sense. And before we do leave the waivers, I want to mention Brian also writes a waiver wire article that you should Ooh. go check out. Uh, I will have some different players that we didn't talk about already. So there's definitely a reason to go there. It's not like, hey, I already heard on the show. Why would I go to the article? Go to the article because there's other players there and it's more in depth written up stuff about them and pictures that you want to look at. So like, go check it out. Um, anyone on the list you want to mention really quick before we, we move on? Um, you know, Victor Scott, we mentioned him last week. Um, Will Benson, he's an outfielder. I didn't put that in there. I'll edit that. But, um, <laughs> you know, those guys, Will Benson's a really good one with TJ Friedel out for the Reds. Um, he's probably going to be batting in the top half of this order for the foreseeable future. Um, so you got to take the good with the bad. He strikes out a lot, but when he makes contact, he hits the crap out of the ball. So uh, I like Will Benson. When he's hot, he's hot. So you have to pay attention to, to him. Yeah. And we talked about Uribe. He's on there, but yep. Brian's got some other players. Uh, Foley, yep. Griffin Jacks. Again, check out the site, rivalfantasy.com. You will get all this information that Brian writes up on here. So don't miss it. Go check it out. Just wanted to make sure we give an acknowledgement there, Adam. I mean, Thanks, Brian, man. make sure we acknowledge it. Do it, do it for the people. Do it, do it for you guys. That way you have all the tools you need to win fantasy baseball. Exactly. Whether it's written, audio, video, whatever it is, we're trying to cover all the bases yeah. for you guys. You know what I mean? Ever you know, people always ask. There's there's a, there's a different lane for everybody. You know I mean, some I'm not one who really likes to read the long articles these days, but some people still ask their go to. So Yep. I respect and we, I try to keep it condensed and, yeah. you know, you can, you can just hit the, the headings and you see who we, who I've got on the, the article. You don't have to read the blurbs. You won't offend me, <laughs> um, but it's, it's there. So you can hopefully consume it quickly and, and beat your league mates to the wire if you need to. Absolutely. All right. So we covered our rivals of the week. We covered the news and injuries that we felt were most impactful right now. We covered a lot of the waiver wire hitters, pitchers, Again, there's articles on the site if you want more of that information that Brian has covered on there. I think it's time for us to do some rival, man. Ooh, let's do some. Let's do it. Let's dive let's in. Do some, let's, let's start with challenges. Let me go ahead and put it on the screen here so we all can play along. All right. So we can do we can look through and see if there's any early bets yet. I don't know if there are any early challenges yet on here or not. Um, we'll also create some social challenges, which I will drop in the chat. And then we'll also drop them on the social, uh, which I'm on X at Rival Fantasy. So make sure you follow there. If you like some of these challenges, um, you can accept them. You can accept part of them, all of them, whatever you want to do. So uh, let's just skip through here first. I don't know. Sometimes early in the week, people are a little shy. Uh, Mackenzie Gore. I do see a lot of Mackenzie Gore right now. Yeah. Going on there, and I, I like that matchup. I think, you know, I think Gore is one of the few bright spots for the uh, <laughs> for the Nats. So yeah. could do a lot worse. Yeah, it could. I mean, you think someone will take it if we put something on it? I mean, I think just based on the the fact that Waldron plays for the pods, um, I think you might get some you know, bite. I think you get you get I'll a bite. So now. I'll skip it for now, though. We'll, we'll so, come back to. But it. there you go. You got an in division one, Manaya versus Score. Mm. That one's you know kind of gross, guy. but kind of fun at the same time. <laughs> uh, you think uh, Sean will rebound at all, or you think he's? Or you think the Mets are just being too hopeful? <laughs> I, you know, I think, I think he's got a lot of potential, but yeah, I, I don't see a world where Manaya becomes the guy people thought he was going to be. Yeah, I sucks, sucks, man. It sucks, but you know, whatever. The Mets yeah. will find something eventually. See, that's an interesting. That's one. a good one. That's I do like one. that one. <laughs> see, that's one where I'm like, okay, I think you could take either side. Um, I'm interested to see what Reed Solson does in year two, play, playing the Mets today. Mets are I think this is spicy side. right think, now. Yeah, I think if you take this side, Mackenzie's Gore got some hype behind him. I think someone might take the other side. I think so. I think I think that is a world where you you can get some some action. Yeah, the, the Gore side. So, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to take this and see what happens. I'll just put right. five on it. I won't get crazy. Um, just to see if anyone bites on it. Now, I know you also had some challenges that we were going to create. And let me see something here. Oh, there's a Lewis Gill yeah. one. I skipped too fast on that one. I want to see. You know. 
Oh, we got one here. Someone's put five dollars on Corey Seager. Reynolds has Ooh. actually been pretty decent to start too. I mean, Honestly, I, I I don't like betting against R- Brian Reynolds. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I almost said Ryan Reynolds. I also don't like betting against Ryan Reynolds. Uh, but <laughs> I think yeah, this is, this is a good one. On paper, you're like, oh, Brian Reynolds doesn't have anything compared to Corey Seager. Right. Not true. Brian Reynolds right. is like one of the most consistent fantasy players of the last three years. So, and again, if you're not getting advice from us at the moment, or you're not sure, you can always click on the player card and get some insight yep. there. I mean, you can see how players have been performing on our cool little chart here. Uh, there's some news. You look at the game logs, all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you click on Brian, I mean, like I said, he's been having some okay games, you know, yeah. some pretty good games. So again, it was the Marlins. Now he's playing the nationals. I mean, good, you know, Good matchups for him. So yeah, the Nats. Is one, that's a juicy matchup against the yeah, Nats. Yeah, this, this is this is a fun one to take a shot on. Um, we'll see how that one plays out. Now, I did yeah. want to show uh, this. Let's see here. You sent yeah. me one. I did send you one. I seen the alert come through. Just so you know, yeah. I seen the yeah. challenge come through. Uh, so you sent me Corbin Carroll, Julio versus Julio. I like it tonight. You know, both. A, what I tend to do with social challenges and you know maybe this is just how i like to play but i like to look at divisional guys i like to look at people who are playing generally the same time so that way you're not like you know oh i have a day game versus a night game right so they're both playing tonight they're both playing uh west coast um so yeah i think you know these are two guys who are in a position to do better than they have the first series so i like corbin carroll tonight uh, against the yankees i think you know they we get Luis Gill, so we're going to see if Gill steps it up. But Carroll mm-hmm. is, he's been on base a ton. So we're just waiting for that power surge. And I think tonight might be the night we we get a home run out of Corbin Carroll. Yeah. I think, I mean, also Julio's kind of started off a little slow. I mean, he's had some exciting moments, but he's also started off a little slow. And he did the so same I, thing last year. So, you know, you yeah. can't, I won't, I'm not going to sit here and, and say, oh, Julio's, you know, not what he was touted to be this year. Right. He's fine. Right. These are guys who have both arguably had slow starts and, you know, I'm kind of interested to see what happens with them this evening. Absolutely. So I'm going to take the challenge because I, yeah. I want to challenge Brian because I love doing that. There it is. <laughs> it's one of my fun. One of my more fun things to do is challenge Brian, especially in baseball where he's the, the expert, if you will. <laughs> yeah. no. I guess I forgot to put that on my He's my a little resume. more in love with it than me. I should put up the I, banner. I, I mean, I should put our names under us and put for you just expert. Don't put Brian. <laughs> <laughs> nobody really knows in what but i'm just i'm an expert so oh, that's hilarious <laughs> all right so let's create some social challenges i know you had some that you really liked uh, yeah let me know what to build here man. Uh, let me know so you know uh, and so you guys know for those of you who haven't really used social challenges these are only really available the day of or 24 hours right. before the games right so i have some challenges i'll tell you about that i'm looking at later in the week um but i think for today another one that i really like we're going to get Stephen Kwan on one side. All right. A little so Kwan has been in fuego, and I really like <laughs> what he's doing. He's he's a, a quiet stud on the, on the Guardians. And then we are going to pop in, I think, to St. Louis, and we'll go with uh, Victor Scott on the other side. Victor Scott, who was on your article. He is on the article. Um, so when you're when you're getting Victor Scott here, when it comes to fantasy points, right? You know, remember points versus categories, big difference. So if Victor Scott gets on base, the odds of you getting points from him are very high. The man can run. He's got like 80, 80 percentile plus speed. Um, his first hit this weekend was an infield single that he legged out. Um So, you know, Victor Scott, he's got that high upside play versus Quan is just like constantly consistent. He is the dude in Cleveland. He's he's their leadoff hitter. Um, So, you know, I don't think you can really go wrong on either side. Um, But Victor Scott is very much like feast or famine. You're 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 kind of waiting around to see if he's going to really take off versus Quan known entity this week. So I'll, I will happily take the Victor Scott side of this. Okay, you'll take the Victor I believe Scott in squad. It. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, since we're going to put this out to the people, 
do you want me to take the Stephen Kwan side and then you'll end up jumping on this? Or do you want me to just to put Victor Scott and let the people jump onto the Stephen Kwan side? You know, if the people want to jump on the Stephen Kwan side, Let's I'm in. It. Let's okay. do it. Let's throw, Let's you know, 25 on this. All right. Because uh, I do believe in Victor Scott. And what I'll do is if you are my friend or Brian's friend, we would see your name here on the uh, quick share. But you're not because you're just watching and you haven't sent me a friend request. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy the link. And I'm actually going to drop it in the chat. So it's in there now. And then I'm also going to post it on X. Um, so you'll find it again at Rival Fantasy. Follow us there. You'll see the challenges that we create here live on the show. If you catch them in time, of course, that is. Um, otherwise, we just drop random ones throughout the week and stuff, too. So you'll see them there. Um, but just, you know, again, when you create challenges like this, this is a social challenge. You can join the system generated ones. That's fine. That's cool. Or you can create challenges. Again, you can share them on social like we're doing or with you guys because we just like to interact with you guys. Or, you know, so when your friends, your family, people in the office, whoever you're debating baseball with, this is a fun way, you know, to just settle them. So um, Stephen Kwan, Victor Scott, it's going to be out there now again. If you accept it, uh, it's on the chat right now, but it'll be on uh, X also in a little bit. Um, so that'll be out there, man. Do you have any other ones for today that you wanted to create or is that yeah, it for today? You know, I think one other quick one we can do a little third base versus third base action. Um, it'll be, we'll do some Alec Bohm of the Phillies versus Ramon Urias of the Orioles. Uh, how do you spell the last name? Urias is U R I A, and he may he should be in there. Oh, all right. I guess he's not. Maybe he's he might be questionable today. Uh, he's oh, been banged yeah. up. So, um, you know, then let's do Josh Josh Young. So, oh. for the the Rangers, there we go. Got two third basemen. I actually think Bohm's going to have a better night tonight than Josh Young. Um. I just, you know, I think he's, I, I think when the Reds, anytime you play the Reds, it feels like those games get more scrappy for some reason. It feels like the Reds like bring out the scrappiness of other teams. I don't know what it is. That and, Cincinnati and water. But. What's so funny is like, like a side note from this is like, I also collect cards, sports cards. Yeah. And Alec Bohm, man, he had a window at one point where people wanted his cards like crazy, man. He was he he's... was the hotness. I mean, <laughs> yeah. people people thought that he was gonna be he was like the next big thing, and I mean yeah. he's still a great player, right? Uh, but but when he's he was not... first rising, it was pop. He was popular. Yeah. he's not what All they right, thought. Which, he was. which side do you want to take on this one? I'm gonna I I like the Alec Bohm side today. Okay. All right. So we'll take we'll take Bohm. We'll get twenty five dollars. We'll also drop this one onto um, social and in the chat. So let's put it in the chat now, so that the chat always has first. Grabs, dibs, baby. First, yeah, first dibs. dibs. It's in there. Okay, perfect. Let me drop this. Yeah, and those are those are the challenges I like today. I think, uh, you know, I, I tend to go position for position, so I like doing like third base versus third base, outfield versus right. outfield. Um, I think it's I think it adds another like layer to it. Um, but you know, there's it's not like there's a a shortage of challenges that you can create. No, absolutely. Yeah, you could do all different positions versus positions. You could do pitcher versus hitter. It doesn't matter. There's no, yeah. you know, I like to do them sometimes, you know, where it's just, I like to do matchups sometimes. Like we talked about before, like I'm a Mets fan, you're an Astros fan. I like to do like, you know, if we're playing each other, I like to throw those out there. Yep. Um. So it just depends on, you know, what's going on. And, and again, also when it comes to challenges, like if you're going to create some, you want to, you know, make it enticing, make it fun. Don't make it like, oh, totally lopsided and say, oh, nobody's accepting my challenge. Well, yeah, it's totally lopsided. Like, yeah. make it fun. Think about players that maybe are sleepers to you, but that, you know, people have a big name and people will likely accept the other side. Have fun with it, but get creative. That's what I like about challenges. You can get creative with it, and the creativity you're using actually matters, like whether yeah. people accept them or not. <laughs> you know what I mean? So It's a lot, um, it's a lot uh, more brain power than just, oh, this matchup versus that matchup. You know, exactly. In my leagues, right? it, it changes how you think about it. Exactly. All right, now what we'll do is we'll do we'll, we're gonna do a best ball at the end like we do like we did last week, but we'll do a bingo card really quick. Uh, for those who aren't aware, bingo is one dollar per card. You set a lineup. You, there's no salary cap or nothing like that, and you're just trying to fill in and hit these um, achievements that are given to you on the card. Every card is different, so you're not like stuck on one kind of you know list of uh, stuff to hit on. Um, as you can see, none of these cards are yellow, so I didn't win on any of these, but the green ones are ones that I hit, so I was so oh. close. Look at this. Oh, Look dude, that would have been a double double whammy, I, too. All I, oh, yeah. Because I mean, that's a four and a corner and a, and a line. Look at this. O'Neal couldn't get me a double, bro. Come on, man. 
Come on, I need a couple doubles from you, man. Come on. Wait, who, who were you? Oh, you were relying on uh, Ellie? Is that who didn't no, get you Neil double? Cruz. Oh, Neil Cruz. Oh, Neil yeah. Cruz. That's... Come on. Bummer, man. Bummer. Come but on. if you do win, it'll look like this. It'll be yellow. Uh, this is four in a corner. You can win that way, or you can win also just five in a row. Um, I don't know if I have any examples off the top to show you guys. But, yeah, five in a row, any direction. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, this was another double whammy. That's a two for um, There you go. Yeah, so this is what it would look like if you won five in a row. Uh, the prize pool will change as people continue to play. Right now, it's up over 100 bucks, uh, and that will just continue to grow until there's winner or winners. Um, so let's go ahead and buy a card. We'll create the lineup. We've talked about a lot of these players. Listen, I'm going to put Tristan McKenzie in here. I just want everyone to know, Tristan McKenzie, I'm in Palm Beach County. He went to school here. So yeah. I want to put Tristan McKenzie on, the, on our bingo card. I root for Tristan. I know he's had a lot of struggles with injuries and whatnot. But this he's is another one of those when he's healthy, man. What a this is this what is a season. This is a season. This I is hope a season, so. Brian. I hope so. All right. So Tristan's my pick. Do you yeah, have a picture right. that you want to make sure? I'm gonna put my money here? where my mouth is. Let's get some Michael Walker in there. All right, where are you? We're gonna at, do Walker. it. I'm gonna all right. And we have one more picture. Let's stay away from my Mets. Don't get me mm -hmm. to trick fall for that. We can go Gil, who we spoke about earlier. Take a risk yeah. there. I, I like I like Gil. Um I think you could do James. Pa actually, I don't like James Paxton. Max Meyer is actually an interesting pick. Um, you know, he's dangerous. a prospect coming up for the the Finns, the Marlins. You know, we don't know what he's going to do, but he gets the Angels, which is a really nice matchup because that right. lineup is garbage. So. Yeah, we'll put Max on there. Hopefully, Jazz hits another grand slam, and we'll be all right. Yeah, and we'll be good. Uh, <laughs> Everything will be fine after that. <laughs> all right, let's get some infielders. I'm right. gonna stay away from Bo. He's got the next pass. So yep. I stay away from that. that for now. Um, uh, honestly, dude, tonight I really like Cattell Marte for the okay. the Diamondbacks against Luis Gill. I think. Uh, oh, checking the wrong caps here. Got that caps lock on. Yeah, I'm yelling Marte. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about Cattell every time he's in my lineup too. So. <laughs> All right, we got Marte in there. Who else can we do? Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many good matchups today, and so. Just so everyone's aware, while we're recording this, two games have started. The uh, the Rockies game has started against the Cubs, and the uh, White Sox Braves game has already begun. So we're not picking from those games, obviously, because we can't. Yeah. Um, so I think as far as infielders go, you know, there's man, there's we so can many go good the more infielders. Obvious route, or we can go the you know the yeah. You know, I, I think I go Bobby Witt, man. I th Bobby Witt has just been unreal so far Look he's this. looked Look so this. good Look at this. Look at this trajectory. And yesterday, <laughs> yeah, that that headline is even less impressive when it said that he finished a double shy of the cycle. He was a double shy of the cycle in the third inning. So Sick. he like I mean, three at bats and he was already loaded up for a cycle. So good for him. He's he's on Shout, out. Shout out to him. I feel like we should put Juan Soto in here. Yeah, Let's I think we have love. to. Let's give him like, some love. Yeah. Let's give him some love. And then who else? I mean, we just put Carol in a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I think Randy Rosarena or George Springer are some good options today. Um okay. I mean, George Springer against your Astros? Yeah, I look Springer in the juice you box, man. You Springer in the it, juice man. box. He he <laughs> loves hitting against the Astros. He you loves said it. it now. So you said it, we're doing it. Yep, we're doing anytime it. Anytime you anytime you anytime Brian is gonna give me a player against the Astros, I'm gonna take it. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna do. Now we have two utility spots to fill. We can fill this obviously with infielders, outfielders, yeah. it doesn't matter. Um Yeah, I, I think know. um yeah, I might dip down into like uh maybe like a Riley Green, a Christian Walker is really nice. Um uh right. yeah, I don't think you can really Jazz is right there too. If we want to see oh, if man. if Jazz can figure it out today, Let, but, let's let's go a pissed off Jazz. Yeah, let's see if he ends up being a pissed off or a crybaby. We'll see which one he is. And then um, you say Christian Walker. You want Walker or? Yeah, I think Christian. I or Christian Walker, Josh Naylor, Jorge Soler could be interesting too. Um, you know the they're playing the Dodgers tonight, so interesting to see what. Um, you know, Soler could do against them, but Naylor against Seattle, you know, that's after dark, which is nice. So right, well, um, actually we can go Naylor then. Yeah. I think, I like uh, yeah, I, I like, I like Naylor, but you also run the risk of, he did sit one night, one day this weekend. Um, 
but he should be playing. So, uh, so give me Josh Naylor. Oops, I just made a challenge and just oh, hey. bingo card. Let me just fill him back up. See what I did? I got distracted. Yeah, that's my bad. I was I was talking too much myself. about Josh Naylor. So. <laughs> when you when you say so many good things about a player, man, yes. you know, lose focus. Let me just throw them all back in there really quick. Yep. All right. Let me get it filled. I see this is the fun about doing it live, folks. I'm doing it live. I'm actually going to put him in there because I feel like it was destiny. It and while uh, while Neil's talking about this, some players you'll see on here that I was thinking about, like Asturi Ruiz <laughs> or like Jack Sawinski, right? What you guys are probably seeing is they've been sitting against left-handed pitching. Um, I don't think that both of those guys will be platoon bats, um, but they're hard to know when we're making bingo cards before the starting lineups come out. So just monitor those things as you're building your cards, right? It's sometimes managers make frustrating decisions that impact fantasy. And as you know, as we know from playing fantasy football, it's out of our control a lot of the time. So just stay diligent on those things and keep it. Absolutely. Keep it top of mind. Yes. Now with bingo, you can put every card's $1. So we can do one, five, 10, 15, all the way to a hundred. We'll do five. I like to do five with the ones we do on the show here. I just, you know, give yeah, put our money show. where our mouth is, you know, yeah, exactly. We're so, confident. Yeah. So that'll create our cards for us. Now, again, you can look at it all day long and you can, you know, keep checking in on it or you can just wait till the end of the day, see how you did. Um, so these are the different cards that were generated again. As you see, they're all different. So we'll see which one we hit on. I'm feeling good about it, Brian. We got the yeah. prize pull up to 116. I feel like we're going to get some of that. I think I think we might get a little chunk of change today. Feel <laughs> so good. Feel so good. The last thing I wanted to do was best ball. And I don't know. Uh, let's see where we're at. We can always do our two-teamer. Uh, are you in this one already? Yeah, If you're I not am. in this one, we could do a six-teamer. I, I, oh, yeah. That MLB 10-team. Yep. You know, I'm going to join that right now. Let's do that one then. So we're going to do this. <laughs> And now there we go. Oh, yeah. it's uh, That's fun. We got to take the chance when we can because we could always do the two-teamers when we're on the show. But yeah. when a six-teamer, a weekly six-teamer presents itself, we got to take advantage of it. And look, we, we know that uh, you know some folks might be auto-drafting. That's part of the challenge, right? Is Yeah. yeah that's when you have to play the ADP game when you're dealing with auto-drafts. And um, so it's, it's just another wrinkle that, that gets thrown in to – to the thing so yeah and it's important to mention i mean while we got the time because we have three minutes here before the draft actually starts um let's let's go into the lobby and just bring it up let me reduce the screen here a little bit all right so you're gonna want to queue players up especially if you're not gonna be there you know what i mean like yep um because the system will allow you to pick players that may not fit your system the right way you know fit the lineup you need so you just want to make sure that you're on top of that um, even with the pitchers, for instance, I mean, this is for the week. So you want to monitor, you know, make sure the player, the pitchers pitch in that week type of thing. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, because you will even even in some of the one day drafts, you may you'll see like Strider in there. You know what I mean? You don't want to pick him when he's not playing that day. So um, it's not for the week at heart, man. You got to be gotta be built for this. Yeah, you got to you got to be built different. That's uh, <laughs> that's what they say. But <laughs> no, it's um. Yeah, you, you got to set your cues. You have to stay a little bit more on top of it. And, you know, look, we're we're always trying to remove barriers to entry as far as playing fantasy baseball, but it is just more involved by its nature. So something to keep in mind as you are doing this, you know, set your cues, do a little bit of research uh, for your weeklies, stay on top of who's starting what, um, and just, uh, you know, be diligent. Yeah. For sure. But we're also having fun, right? We're, we're, not, we're not playing for... Three hundred, five hundred dollars. We're not paying mortgages with, uh, with no. our winnings. It's to get a little skin in the game without without feeling like you're gonna <laughs> lose your shirt based on yeah. a fantasy draft. So, I got the damn last pick of the draft. You have the second pick. I do, I do. So this is where you start thinking a little strategy, right? And we know that it looks like our first pick is on auto when we know that he's probably already set his his cue if he's yes. already auto. So for me, that that becomes, okay, am I playing the ADP game of Acuna going first? And then, you know, I get my pick of the litter after. Or is there going to be a curveball thrown where, like, J-Rod gets taken first and then you, know, you kind of have to pivot, right? Do you take Acuna second or and deviate from the plan? So 
And again, so, you know, what's, me, what do you think when you see, you know, you get back to back picks in a MLB weekly, you know, versus what do I see. Yeah. Like I, when, listen, when you're at the back of the turn, like how do you, how do you approach the, your, so position? it depends. Like this is a weekly one. So obviously I can't think like I would in my daily ones. I do them a little differently. Um, but for the weekly ones, I mean, I'm going to, I have to consider all the stuff that we mentioned that we talk about. Like you, you're talking about, there's pitchers who pitch twice this week. Like I kind of want them in my, on my team. You know what I mean? So I might reach for some of these guys. You know what I mean, I yeah. might go at them a little early, especially because I know Brian's on top of it already. So I know he's going for it. If, I, if Brian's not in the draft, maybe I'm thinking who else am I drafting? I don't know if they are thinking about it, but Brian, I know is already thinking about it because he wrote a damn article about it. So I have to stay on top of these things. You know what I mean? So I might reach for some guys. Um, and again, I'm playing the matchups. I'm looking at that. Um, and, and when it's just like me and one other person or it's a daily, you know, I'm looking for, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go out the park with these plays, yeah. but I got to be a little more strategic when we're going weekly like this, man. And six teams too. It's not two or three or four, it's six. I gotta be careful, man. Yeah, mistakes. And when you know. when it's six teams and it's three starting pit or three pitchers, three pitching yeah. slots, right? Like you, that that changes it pretty significantly. Uh, That's eighteen yeah. pitchers off the board, yeah. which isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things. But in a weekly style, mm-hmm. it's you know that's the brunt of of who's pitching, right? right? So you right. gotta you gotta pick and choose. So, so all right, Acuna out the gate. So there we go. It gets me Acuna off the board, which is good and bad. Um, you know, I think it's, it's easy Bobby Witt for me just based on what he's doing. So, um, would be shocked if he didn't keep up this, yeah, he won't keep up the torrid base, but he's, he's Bobby Witt. He's going to be fine. Yeah. Now we got, uh, Nun- Nunley is, looks like they're in here, so they should be making their pick. Low ball and Mason over here look like they're going to potentially auto draft. Yep. And then which, me as in here. Which we know, Hey, like we're drafting middle of the day. We know that everybody can can stop work and stuff we get it yeah but we are just lucky enough to be able to do a draft in the middle of the day so we're just yeah. we're just happy to be here and have everybody in the in the room yeah and again this is why it's important to put players in your queue you know to have these guys set up as much as you can um it's not ideal but it's definitely what i do as well because I, I you know i i do so many drafts i don't want to get caught off guard and i'm not available all day to do them so yeah uh, i try to queue them up the best i can you know what i mean yep. It's so. yeah, it's uh, it's just a numbers game after a certain point. So you just yeah. you hope that you your team is equipped and you don't have any questionable auto draft picks that uh, didn't you know that when your queue runs out right that that's yeah. when things get dicey. So and, and and the worst situation is typically at pitcher. So even if you just queue up the right pitchers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it typically won't hurt you as bad. Should be um, all right. Yeah. All right, so Lowball went on to auto draft. We'll see if Mason goes on to auto draft. Uh, again, these people had five minutes to per, you know, to join to come around from their alert or their email. So um, try to give people as much time as we can before it's you know you don't want to yeah. wait too long if you're actually available to draft. <laughs> and we know there's you know schools of thought started immediately and then you know have short timers. We get it, we get it, but we're trying to give everybody yeah. a fair shake to get in and you know adjust accordingly. So that's yeah, that's what you see. Here. Again, yeah, because again, our goal is to make it fun, not just, you know, let me win a whole bunch of money. I mean, yep. you want to have fun as well. So now my turn. I'm up. I'm up, man. Do I go your boy Corbin Carroll just say so you can't? I, I don't think he's making it back to me either way. So either I way. think, you know, you you, your, your big thing is do you decide, do you like double up on outfield? Yeah. You know, who do you think? Because oh. a lot of these guys are not making it back to you. Right. So I'm trying to think now, like, who am I going to lose? Do I, who do I want to risk? I'm thinking I'm going to go Soto first. Ah, I can't get out of here. Okay. Let me get Soto. Okay. So I was I hoping Soto would make it back to me, but. I'm not letting him. I'm not letting him do it, man. I'm not letting him do it. I'm buying the hype right now. Yeah. He, man, I hate seeing him do this in a Yankees uniform, but it's. <laughs> trying to think off my. um. Do I get wishful thinking? If I feel like my boy Pete's gonna catch fire because I feel like he's not gonna come back to me either. Oh, man, yeah. I think I'm gonna go it's tough. You got to make these choices. Yeah. So Pete early, I don't hate it. Okay. I'm a so then, so yeah, see, it looks like Mason did set his cue. So now he's got you know two pitchers. Top two pitchers are off the board. And it looks like Mason actually just showed up too. Okay. Yeah. So we're I, in trouble, so Brian. We're, we're in trouble. Yeah. It's uh, it's gonna get dicey in here. Okay. So now I'm up again. <laughs> 
Uh, I mean, Kyle Tucker is still on the board. Freddie's still on the board. Judge, right? So I think got to go Freddie. I'm going to finish out my infield right there. Uh, it's always nice to get a position out the way. Yes. So my infield's filled up. Um, so now now it's kind of like pick your poison. Uh, so I'm going to go Jordan because I'm a homer and I got to have at least one Astro on my team. Um, and not mad at it. I don't love Jordan batting second in that lineup right now. I'm hoping a spot I may change that, but he's, I mean, he's swinging the bat like he's in midseason form. So I'm not too worried about him. Yeah. I still only have one of each. So I got to, you know, make sure I get to, I like him a lot. I might go Kim. Again, man, it's weird. Like you never know if you're reaching or if it's like, and and, you know, keep in mind too, right. As, as we're working behind the scenes on what our ADP structure looks like and everything, we're still rocking off of preseason rankings. Right. So know that going in and you know, the guys who are at the top may not necessarily be the best for this week, right? Like Lourdes Gurriel is not going to be at the top, even though he was one (laughs) of the highest performers last week. right? Right. So just keep that in mind as you guys go through these drafts. I'm gonna there finish is, off, I'm gonna finish off my infield. I like a lot of outfielders, and that's kind of the problem where I kind of feel like I might let it go down a little bit, man. It's so deep. The outfield position is so deep this year. I'm gonna make a crazy move. You ready for this? I am. Boom. Oh, you sniped me on the gossy <laughs> on the goss train. I wasn't man. gonna let you have them. I wasn't oh, gonna let you have them. It did me absolutely. This is the problem dirty. with you writing those articles that help me, sir. I'm helping the competition. But yeah, Gossman is the only ace adjacent uh <laughs> guy that you know left um that has two starts this week. So. Listen, you're gonna need to uh, buy, pay up if you want your guys, man, because I'm going for them all. I know, I know. I'm gonna have to start making some some difficult decisions here on you know pitching versus uh yes, my utility are, spots. Sir, I'm coming for them. I'm coming for them. So all right. So now I'm up. I'm good on infield, so I'm not really gonna worry too much about that. Um yeah, so I think you know, looking at outfielders. I, I kind of like Randy or Rosarena this week. You know, I know they got the Rangers tonight, um, but I think, you know, he's he's the guy. He's the truth. So I'm going to finish up my outfield. Not a bad And then man. I'm going to come in. I'm going to go get Reese Olsen as a two-star okay. pitcher. This, I'll give uh, it to you again, man. Yeah, I knew you were, but <laughs> I, I like Reese probably the best out of the – he's one of my top three two-star pitchers this week. Gotcha. I do need an outfielder. Garcia's been pretty good, man, to start the season, so I might go him. He's just I've one been, of those. He's got to stay healthy. Got to yeah. stay healthy. So I've been talking I've been talking about Jazz a lot. I kind of want to, you know, get angry Jazz on my team just to – just because it's just funny. To see. Just to see what happens. Now that he hit that grand slam, maybe he gets into, a, you know, a mood here. But I feel like I can wait on Jazz if I want. So that's like a guy I'll put on my queue. Yeah. And then I can reach somewhere else if I want to. You know what I mean? Um, I still need two utilities and I need two pitchers. Um, and again, you know, we do talk about, you know, Brian mentioning the guys who have two starts. Um, but still, do you pass on a Lewis Castillo? You know what I mean? Do you do exactly. that? Do you and you have three pitcher Lopez? spots. So, you know, you get one studly performance. It's still just right. as good as a two start. Right. Exactly. Um, so, you know, it really depends. You know, there's so many different ways to approach it. Uh, I feel like I want to get another one just to kind of, you know, get another stud pitcher in there. So I'm going to start with that. Um, and then I think I'm going to go. I think I want Garcia, man. Yeah. The only Garcia is hard to, he's hard to pass up here. Yeah. So now I have two utility spots and a pitcher left. What do you have left? So now I've got two utilities and two pitchers that I got to fill out. Um, so I think here, this is where I go. Gunnar Henderson for my first utility. Easy pick. And then, you know, I think I'm going to fill out the rest of my utility. Um, You know, let's – I'm going to go down. I'm going to go get George Springer. Like I said, you know, I said earlier, he loves loves playing against the Astros in Minute Maid, so we'll go with Springer here. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad, sir. Decent pitchers left still. 
You're still yeah, left of, with the you're still left with the idea of do you go with a guy who's going to get two starts, right? Versus you know you've got Zach Gowan, you've got Tyler Glass now. Yeah, you got you, know, no, you got Derek yes. Scooball, yeah. like <laughs> Kirby. Val- yeah, you got a lot of good options. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to get another one though, man. I think I'm going to go. Yeah. Amanda. And then, snipe me on a manga. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that to you, man. And I'll get my boy Jazz. All, All right, right, so I got one utility spot left. I got one utility spot left. So let me get this guy. See here. now, right? We're we're looking at yeah. So like Mason's got to finish out his pitching, and then he's got one more utility. Yeah. Um, you know, low ball. He's got to get two more pitchers. Right. So. Yep. So now you got to play the game of, okay, these guys need these positions versus yep. what do I need? Who's going to go where? And it's at the, this point, right, when pitchers start to go off the board at the end too, now it's, okay, what what decision am I making as far as am I dipping into those like deep two-start guys? Right. Or am I going to just try to saddle a stud and hope that they have a, you know, a studly performance? Should be interesting to see how this wraps up. So Mason went with Christian Yelich. Okay, okay. Yelich. So I think I go for another one of my my two start guys. Going with Tanner Houck. He gets the A's. It's a juicy little matchup for him. Um. All right. So I need one pitcher still. So I think this is where I'm probably going to go get one of those ace adjacent guys. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with a little bit of George Kirby. So I'll do George Kirby to close it out. Mm, I'm a big Seattle Mariners starting rotation fan. Man. So yeah. I like that move. It's, they are they are stacked for what they are. So yeah. Let's hope that they can all stay healthy and have some success this year. For me, I'm going to choose for the last pick. I got to go Kim or Cruz, man. I'm going for my my home run shortstop here. The high upside shortstop. With. Ah, man. Kim's got the Cardinals. Yep. Cruz has the Nationals. And that's and that's. I mean, they're both. Yeah, <laughs> those, yeah. <laughs> those are both good matchups to start oh, the man. week. I might go with Cruz, Sorry. although he did fail me on that bingo card. I don't know. You did, but di- you different ball game here. Different yeah, ball game true. in a points league. I'm gonna go with Cruz. Cruz. And that's it, folks. That is it. It's that so after easy. The, after the fact, you can look at your lineup, see what you got. Here you see, I got Ozzy, Pete, Garcia, Soto, Cruz, Jazz, and my pitchers. Man, I'm liking my pitchers. Man, I'm really a fan of the pitchers that I pulled off there. So. I got, you know, I feel like I got two aces, one who, you know, you gifted me with the two games and then uh, Shota as well. I'm digging it. And of course, you can go to the stand ins. You can kind of see what everyone's projected. Look at me all the way down here. Look at you at the bottom. I know I'm at the bottom, man. I think, uh, (laughs) you know, sometimes it doesn't register like, oh, yeah, Tanner Houck's going to start today because sometimes they wait to to announce it. But I think that could be playing in. uh, Or I guess they don't play until tomorrow. But yeah, you know. Sneaky it's all pitchers. good. All it's good. A good lineup, man. It's a good lineup. So they're giving, uh, they're giving, um, for the standings, they're giving our boy Mason here the, uh, the highest projection. <laughs> I mean, when you got, you got Simeon and Olsen, that's a pretty good one, two. And then he's got, so. you know, Spencer and Corbin in here. So, of course, yeah. yeah, he's got a good start there. All right, cool. So yeah. we'll see how it goes. Um, again, there's tons of lobbies to join right now. You can in there, do folks. M- There's MLB Daily. So tomorrow, and then there's uh, weekly. So that's what we just did. There's lots that are very close to being full. The dailies fill up pretty quick. That's why right now like there's no one in them. But like if you join a two teamer, it's gonna fill up kind of like right away sometimes. Yeah. So we won't do that right now. We'll we'll you know we'll wrap the show up with just us. You know we we played challenges. We played bingo. We did best ball. We covered everything we felt needed to be covered on today's episode. And of course, again, um, we'll have more content throughout the week. So if you're, you know, looking for content, whether it's on our socials at Rile fantasy on, you know, X, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Brian will have articles potentially going up. There'll be, you know, short videos that maybe go up. Who knows? It all just depends on, you know, what news is happening, what things are happening in baseball. Um, we'll, we'll have updates as we go along, man. Yeah, um, it's, it's always changing. It's always changing. There's always stuff to talk about. So we'll, we'll make sure you guys are taken care of. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, other than that, of course, again, in the description is a link for Rival Fantasy. You just seen us playing. If you haven't signed up here and you're like, how the hell do I do that? Click on that link. And if it's your first deposit, you'll actually get a deposit match up to $200 plus a $25 voucher. If you already do have an account, you're like, man, I would love some more free stuff besides just the free card game that we didn't even show today. Um, you can actually refer a friend and you both will get $25 vouchers. Um, so lots of ways. Uh, we just encourage you guys to play. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Rival Fantasy is that, you know, best all in one platform for you to have fun, settle debates, do all that kind of stuff. So we definitely recommend it. Anything that I'm missing here, Brian, before we, you know, let them go for the week in MLB? Yeah, man. I think, uh, you know, hit us with any other questions you guys have, any, you know, disagreements. That's what we're we're here to talk about. Let's settle some things over challenges. But uh, no, just enjoy that. The first full week of MLB action of 2024. Yeah, absolutely. All right, man. That is it for us here. We appreciate you guys for joining us as always. We're out.